In this video, you will witness the interrogation of Brandon Wright. He was arrested in Salt Lake City, Utah, after he walked into a police station and confessed to the 1994 murder of 49-year-old Robert Bushy in Kelso, Washington. According to reports, Brandon was hungry and broke into Robert's trailer looking for food. As Brandon was going through Robert's things, he was interrupted by Robert when he returned from an outing. Wright was caught off guard and attacked Robert, hitting him in the head with a hammer and then stabbing him multiple times. Watch and listen closely during the interrogation to see what Brandon has to say. R.I.P. to the victim, Robert Edward Bushy. <laughs> Give me some, sorry. Give me some drink. Do you guys mind if you guys mount beer or water? Oh, that's right. Yeah. 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 I apologize for being a dick. You you, you, I tell you what, you were not. You you weren't being a dick. Okay. It's I completely understand your position. So thank you for giving us this opportunity to at least talk to you for a little bit, okay? Um, and if you want to stop talking, of course, that's your right, and we're not going to force you to continue talking to us, okay? But I do appreciate that it's very gentlemanlike of you to, to come over here and at least give us an opportunity to, to ask a few questions, okay? So as soon as he... This is uh, my Captain Dark Kirk. Hi there. Hi there. Hi there. I'm Rich Fletcher. I don't know if I gave you my name. I told you where I was from over the jail, but I didn't tell you my name. Sorry, so. Captain Fletcher. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So, um, as we briefly discussed over at the jail, um, um, I did I did listen to an interview yesterday um, that you had with uh, Detective Wilson a couple days ago, and um, and I do appreciate your willingness to come in and talk about what what happened because it really not only helps the family but it, it seems like it's helped you quite a bit to get it up your chest so that's 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 an advantage for both of us i think um the reason we wanted to come down and talk to you though is because after we listened to the interview there's just some things that weren't addressed and it's not um it's not because um they want to talk to you about it it's because they didn't know the, the whole case because you came in and basically gave them the information about what had happened and they they didn't know any history of it so um, and because we're from Kelso, where it occurred, uh, we have um, a lot more information about the incident itself that, that was never addressed the other night. So that's that's why we came down and wanted to talk to you. Right. Okay. Um, during the interview, though, um, you gave them an, a handwritten note that you intended to send to us. Yeah. Does that look familiar to you? Yeah. Is that the note that you wrote? Yes. So you drafted that in your own handwriting? Yeah. Okay, and it was intended for us to have the family, yeah. Oh, for the, the family. You guys, yeah. Okay. Okay. I just wanted to I wanted to confirm that, that that you hand wrote that and signed your name to it. Yeah. Okay. And it looks like you wrote that on the seventeenth. Is that right? I'm ten sure. ten four days ago. It should have a date. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, um, if it's okay with you. Um, I'd kind of like to just start by just kind of recapping what you what you talked about the other day. Is that okay? Um, and, and, the, and the only reason I want to do that is just because I want to make sure I want to, I want to be clear mm -hmm. since I'm talking to you here in person mm -hmm. um, that that's you know what you intended to to okay. talk about. Is that is that okay with you? Sure. Okay. Sure. So um, during the interview, you you discussed uh, leaving Utah um, and flying over to Portland. That's correct. Okay. And it was um, towards middle of August that you flew there? Yes, it was. Okay. It was What's that? Yeah. No. Um, you haven't read your rights, correct? I have. Do you remember your rights? I have the right to remain silent. I have the right to be represented by an attorney. I can't afford one that will be appointed for me. Let me go through the whole thing again, okay? I know, I know you read your rights the other day, and I know you remember, <coughs> I know you remember your rights, correct? Okay, I'm going to bring to you again, right. just for clarification, okay? You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can will be used against you in court of law. You have the right to talk to an attorney now and presently while you're being questioned. If you cannot afford to hire an attorney, won't be appointed to represent you without costume before any questioning if you wish. You can decide at any time to exercise your rights and not answer any questions or make any statements. And if you wish to answer questions now without an attorney present, you have the right to stop answering those questions at any time. Mm -hmm. Okay, like I told you before. Okay? Yeah. <clears throat> um, so 
again, this is your handwritten note, correct? It is. Okay. Um, so, back in August of 1994, you flew over to Portland. Do you remember where, what, what airline you flew? I don't. Okay. Do you, have you, had you flown much at that point in time? No. In your life? I had never flown in my life, except for, yeah, I don't think I had flown in my life at that point. Were you working here? I was. Okay. Where were you working? At Horseshoe Express Trucking Company. Although Brandon's confession is voluntary, it has been over 20 years since the crime in question was committed. The detectives will want to ensure that the confession is valid by asking numerous, specific questions related to the sequence of events, the crime scene, and the evidence collected that only the perpetrator would be able to corroborate. Were you a truck driver? Or? No, I was uh, washing diesels. Okay. So were you laid off then, or were you still employed when you left here? Actually, that might have not have been the time that I was employed there, because I was in Orange Street like a few different times. So I might not have been employed there at that time, but I believe I was. It's, been, it's a long time ago. Yeah, no, I understand. <clears throat> and you flew out to Portland with who? A uh, guy named Scott Great. And who, who's Scott? He was, was one of my friends. Is he still around? I'm not sure. Where is, is that? Did he live here with you in, in Utah? Yeah, he was in Orange Street Halfway House with me. Okay. Do you know how old he is? He's probably three years older than me, maybe two years older than me, so he'd be like 46 or 47 now. Okay. Do you have any family around here? or did you, any, I assumed you talked to him quite a bit since he was your buddy. I don't know. I know he had an uncle that lived here, and that's all I know. What was it? Do you know his name? I don't. Okay. okay. Um. So what made you guys decide to go to Portland? Uh, we had a friend, Randy Davis, that had a cousin that lived in Kelso that said that we could stay up there with them. And was Randy from here also? I think he's originally from Washington. Oh, okay. So is, do you know if he's still up there? Or? I don't know. I haven't seen him for probably maybe 12 years. Okay. I saw him briefly, briefly once, maybe 12 or 14 years ago. Where at? Uh, was in... Um, the Utah State Prison is barely passing I saw him. According to court documents, Brandon has a lengthy list of charges in Utah since 1990, including aggravated robbery, aggravated burglary, attempted aggravated assault with a deadly weapon, and theft and drugs, among others. By the window, it would have been more like maybe 15 years ago. Thank you. And he told you that he had some cousins up in, Ka in Kelso or Washington that you could stay with. So did you say like you wanted to go up there and, and like hang out, or I mean, how how that arrangement come about? We we didn't have a place to stay. Like we were gonna. Oh, we had a we got dirty urines. At stupid, at like a, something that petty, so you, like a dirty urine at the halfway house. Mm -hmm. And so we were gonna run away or whatever. And so we absconded from the halfway house, and he said that he had a, his cousin would let us stay there. Okay. So how did you um, how did you get your plane ticket? Did you guys have money, or did someone buy it for bit. you? Yeah, we had a little bit of money. Like I got my last check, and Scott got his last check. Okay. So you got into Portland mid August, mm -hmm. and who picked you up from Portland? It was uh, uh, Randy's cousin and, and her husband, or her, I don't know if they were married, either her husband or her boyfriend. And you said it was Cal and Sue. Cal and Sue. Mm -hmm. Do you know what their name, last names are? I don't know. Okay. What did they pick you up in? Do you remember that? I don't remember the specific car, but it was, uh, seems like it, it was in older like one of them uh, boat cars kind of not a boat car but you know what I mean uh, I, don't know. I don't know it's like a big sedan big four door car yeah. so um so they picked you up and I assume drove you up to Kelso yeah do you know where they live like Longview count out in the county or in Kelso somewhere I don't not sure right. don't remember I don't remember um so you stayed with them for a little bit 
How long did you stay with them? Probably maybe seven or ten days, maybe. Or somewhere between maybe seven and ten days. Okay. So how long did you intend to stay with them? I don't know. Indefinitely, or I don't know. You're just going to obtain know. residency up there and just stay there? More or less, but then... Uh, I don't know. I don't seem to like get along well with people apparently for very long periods of time. So I was just going to come back home, and they dropped me off by a place where the train comes by, and I was going to try to jump on the train, but it went by too fast every time. There's no way I could have jumped on that train. <laughs> okay. So, um, did you did you have like a uh, a disagreement with them or something, or why did you leave their house and and go? Go down and, and, and stay in the shop. It was or the a, shed. It was a mis it wasn't a misagreement, it was me. Like I have a difficult time getting along with people and so I told them I had to leave. And they were like fine with that and they me yeah, so it was like a mutual thing. So you just left on foot then? They dropped me off by the train by where the train goes by the river. By the river. Okay. Did you have a, were you on foot or did you have a bicycle or? On foot. Did, did you ever have a bicycle? Did you ever find a bicycle? Mm -hmm. Okay. And any other transportation other than by foot? No, not until I stole Mr. Bushy's car. Okay. So they dropped out of the train depot and um, you obviously walked mm -hmm. from there. How far do you think you walked? Did you walk around for a couple of days, or or yeah. was it the same day that you found I the shop? I think it was like two days. Okay. Where did you stay for those few days? In the bushes by the river. Okay. So um, when you left the river then to go, and you ultimately ended up at Bob's property, how, what 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 took you there? Yeah, I got I was smoking cocaine with this guy, and I got all paranoid that he was going to beat me up. Brandon admits to smoking cocaine and being under the influence, something the detectives should want to make note of. Most suspects are not as forthcoming about the use of drugs, without first being asked, even during a confession. Do you remember who that was? I don't. Okay, just a no. guy on the river? Yeah. Okay. So, um, you left him then, and then just happened upon this property? I was running, running through bushes. I don't know. I thought like all of a sudden him and a bunch of people were chasing me. And I was like, I was really, really like paranoid that they were going to attack me or something. Mm -hmm. So I was just running through all these bushes, and then I stopped some where to listen, and I laid there for a long time. Seems like it would not have been like overnight, all the way overnight. But I, then I got up and started walking again. And that's when I encountered at that that um, shop. So you talked about uh, a big shop, a big shed-like shop, mm -hmm. and then you you had talked about a house and a travel trailer mm -hmm. and a big box fan truck mm -hmm. kind of a thing, and then a red car. Mm -hmm. um, <coughs> Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but you had mentioned, I think, during the interview that, that you had entered a shop, the shop, the big metal shop first. It was a wood, wood shop. Like, I think it was made out of wood. Could it have been metal, or you just don't remember? It, maybe it could have been, but I don't think it was. So, um, it was a pretty good size, right? Mm -hmm. Pretty big shop, okay. Um, and what did you do inside the shop there? I was walked around looking at stuff and then I was going to steal some stuff out of there. So I stopped, I put it by a door, by a sliding door. Uh -huh. And then, um, um, and that's it. And that's all well, I did in there. So if I showed you a quick clarifying question, how did you get into the shop? I think through the side, through a side, like there was a, a door that you could, you could slide out a little bit or something. I was think, that, was I that th unlocked? I think that was, I honestly don't remember. I don't think it was unlocked. 
So if I showed you a picture of the shop, you think you would recognize it? More than likely, I would imagine that would. Did, was there any um, was there any refrigeration in there? Any Not that I know fridge of. freezer or anything like that? Not that I know okay. of. But you said there was some other property in there. What kind of property? Like all kinds of camping equipment and shop equipment and like tools and things like that. Is that where you got his, his tools that you ended up taking eventually? Okay. So the welder and the animal yeah. and the skilled side, it's called power saws yeah. or something. And the what? Power saws or skill saws or something that you see you took a couple of those to go? It seems like I took some other power tools, but I don't remember what they were. But that's where they came from was the shop. Yeah. Okay. Um, and you stayed there for? I don't know, maybe two or three days. Okay. At what point did you finally dis decide to go over? I mean, if you were in that shop, you kind of knew that someone would stay in that travel trailer then. Because it was close by. It was only 30, 40 yards away, maybe. Is that about right? So you knew someone was coming and going from the travel trailer. I didn't know that they were living in there at the time. But then I came under the impression that somebody was because it was like like somebody was living in there mm -hmm. like currently. So. Okay. So, uh, what, at what point did you decide to go over to the trailer? Um, during one of the days when I was getting real hungry, I thought there might be some food in there. Okay. So, you decided to go in there and look? Mm -hmm. Okay. You had mentioned before that you broke a window out to get into the trailer. That's correct. Okay. Did you, how did you break out the window? I don't remember. I don't remember like if I put something on it and hit it or I don't remember to be honest. Given the amount of time that has passed since the crime in question was committed, along with the fact that Brandon was under the influence of drugs, he is unable to recall some of the events that took place. His lack of details shouldn't raise a red flag for the detectives or give them a reason to discount his confession. A welder's cap. Mm -hmm. A welder's like a head protector in the hole, in the stuffed in the hole. Do you remember anything like that? Could you have used something like that to cover your hand with? Easily, I, yeah. Okay. But you're not sure? If I showed you a picture, it might, it might recall memory. I remember seeing like some welder caps, but I don't remember how I broke the window, regardless of whether there was something in the window or not. I don't remember. Just Did you ever cut your hand when you broke the window? Do you remember cutting your hand? I don't think so. I think I broke my, I think I cut my hand during the struggle with the knife okay. right there. Do you still have a scar of that? Yeah. Oh. Can I take a picture of that? Yeah. On oh, your thumb or? Yeah. Is that what you just showed me? Mm -hmm. That little mark right there? Mm -hmm. You think that was caused by the? The knife closing of my hand. Oh, during the incident itself? Yeah. How bad did it bleed? I don't remember. So, uh, you broke the window out of the door, opened up the door, and, and went in the trailer. Was anyone inside the trailer? No. You remember the inside of the trailer? I don't, not any more than it just being a standard trailer, like thousands of trailers, or, you know, I've been in countless trailers. Do you remember if it was, like, really well kept, or if it was kind of disorganized, or... Kind of moderate, like not over, like not over clean or not over dirty, just kind of lived in, not like real clean or not real dirty. Okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna show you a picture of the the what I think is the shop you were in. All right. Um, and just tell me if you recognize it, okay? All right. That easily could have been it. Yeah. Okay. That's no, metal. That. That's made out of metal, so. Uh, but that's a big shop that was on the property where the trailer was. So, mm -hmm. more than likely than not, that, that was the shop that you were talking about, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> so, you said it wasn't real clean, but... But it wasn't dirty either. It's okay. not that dirty. So, uh, you got into the trailer, and um, was there anything in the trailer that you were gonna take, or just, or were you just looking for food? 
first I was just looking for food, and and then I thought there might be a gun in there or something. I've been like into guns when I was younger. So. Mm -hmm. So what did you have to eat in the trailer? A bunch of boxes of granola bars. Okay. Did you make any food? Mm -hmm. Just ate ready to eat food. Anything else? Not that I remember. I think that was it. Okay. And I think you told Detective Wilson that you were in there for like hours. Probably a long time. So what were you doing in the trailer for so long? Were you sleeping or just hanging out looking at stuff? Because or... that's quite a long period of time to be quite honest with you. It is. Yeah. It's hard to remember. Yeah. It just seems like I was in there for a long time. Okay. Were you high then? I'm sure I was, but not, not like, just maybe in a residual way from lack of sleep, like REM depression, I was probably up, I don't know, I don't know. Um, from the time that I left Portland, I mean, I left Salt Lake, I probably slept two partial nights in like 20 day period or something. Mm -hmm even though I didn't continue using drugs after I left Sue and Calvin. I was probably just, you know, still kind of gone mentally because of the brand depression. I would imagine that had an impact, not that it's an excuse or anything, but that's just a, like a legitimate thing like you could take into consideration. The detectives questioned the amount of time that Brandon was in the building. However, Brandon is once again forthcoming with information regarding his mental state and how his actions may have been negatively influenced. In considering my kind of mind at the time, mm -hmm. not that it takes away from their responsibility, but absolutely that would have an impact on, you know, everything, whatever yeah. that would happen. So I assume you didn't have any spare clothes because you left Calvin and Sue's place. Did you take any clothes? Did you find any clothes to take with you? I don't know. If, I don't think I did. Okay. Um, Unless I took some clothes from that I had that I brought from Salt Lake, maybe. How about any gloves? Um, I don't remember having any gloves at all. Okay. Where did you find the hammer? I think it was just in, uh, I think it was inside of the trailer somewhere. Was it just laying there? Or? I think so. So it was kind of an impulsive. Yeah. You said that you saw uh, Bob come home. Yeah. So yeah, we, the first thing that I. Because. Okay, because you kind of knew that he was going to find you in there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So when you, well, I mean, what was your frame of mind then? You just like didn't want to get caught. You. Yeah. So did you know you were going to attack him as soon as he came in the trailer? That's what I thought was that I would I would hit him and then take his car and leave. Okay. I didn't think that he would be able to. Like uh, he didn't even, it didn't even seem to phase him. The hammer didn't even phase him. Okay. Um, I think you told me you hit. I think you told Detective Wilson that you hit Bob in the head. Uh, yeah. Was he, so he was facing you when you hit him with the hammer, correct? Yeah. So do you do you know for sure where you hit him? In the head. Okay, because there's a really big gash on on his eye, on wrist beneath his eye. Could you have hit him there with the hammer? Maybe. Okay. So you said when you hit him with the hammer, it didn't phase him at all. It probably, it probably just made him mad. Probably. So what happened right after you hit him with the hammer? He kind of charged toward me, and um, and I saw the knife on the ground, and I grabbed it really quick, and, and he was like tackling me, and. And I pulled out the knife as quick as I could out of the case and everything and started stabbing him. So you said it was a Leatherman tool. Yeah. So are you sure of that or you just think that's what it was? It was either a Leatherman or a Gerber multi-purpose tool. It was definitely a multi-purpose yes. tool. It, it yeah. wasn't a folding knife. No. But it was in a case. Yeah. So you actually had to take the case open, remove the device, and then open it up. Yeah. So a Leatherman tool is... Yeah. Well, Leatherman nice. tool is... You have to open it up and then take a blade out of the yeah. handle itself. So you had to manipulate yep. quite a bit. Do you remember doing that? I do. Okay. Like so just briefly, it was like getting tackled and like just super fast. I don't know. It's like, who couldn't even imagine it, but that's exactly what happened. Okay. Was he hitting you? No, he was like tackling me. 
like with his arms so there were no blows being thrown it was like just coming at me and then I got I actually was able to reach down while he's like pushing at me I open it up believe it or not I opened the whole thing up and started stabbing him and that's exactly, so was he, exactly what happened was it like a bear hug that yeah you, okay so of. he had you wrapped up kind of in his arms then kind of not all the way at all like he started pushing towards me and then so you were able to open it up it was and you had mentioned that you stabbed him a bunch of times in the stomach was that because you couldn't get higher Brandon describes the attack as unplanned and spontaneous, and he was not sure whether the damage inflicted would be substantial, which ultimately resulted in him stabbing Robert a very high number of times. Because he had you in a bear hug, or do you remember? Because there was a lot of stab wounds in his stomach. Probably yeah. because I was, like, down, like, I, when I went down mm -hmm. to pick it up, he's a big guy, mm -hmm. and, um, and I just started stabbing the first place that I could see, and he, and he kept coming, kept coming, kept coming, kept coming, and it didn't... Like it seemed to like it wasn't doing much to him. It, I mean, it, obviously it was killing him, but he was a strong man. So yeah. At what point did he fall down, or did you push him down? I don't really don't know. I don't know. Well, at some point you must have been on top of him. Maybe at the end. No, I don't know. I don't think. Uh, Oh yeah, yeah, to, and then I covered him with some blankets and stuff. And you like at one point, he stopped pushing towards me, and then I stabbed him maybe five more times, and he said, you're killing me. Was he still standing there? Yeah, and then he was, was falling. And it's hard to remember, like, it's hard to remember, like, the exact details, but I, it's just, like... How long did he live, then, after you stopped stabbing him? I don't know, maybe... Oh, man, maybe... Maybe five minutes or so, maybe. Quite a while, then. Yeah. Because, because five minutes is quite a while if you're... Yeah. Watching something like that. Yeah. Maybe. Was he cocking? The, the reason I think that's because that's when I, I think that I started smelling like feces and urine. After someone has died, changes will happen to the body, including the release of stool from the rectum, urine from the bladder, or saliva from the mouth. This happens as the body's muscles relax. Brandon describes that Robert eventually died after almost five minutes based on this void process. But I think that, that, that he was deceased at that point, but he may have died before that. Did he say anything after he fell down? No. So he only just said, you're killing me when you were yeah. fighting with him. Yeah. Is that the only thing he said? Yeah. Never say anything else? No. So after you, after you thought he was dead and you smelled, smelled urine Sorry. and feces, yeah. Um, you stuck around for a while. I did. Okay. Why did you stick around? Oh, I don't know, panic. I didn't. Just I don't even know what. Yeah, what was going through my mind. I can try to think of it. I'm not. I don't even know. I was scared. I, obviously, I was really scared. I, I, I think. Did they hear? Like a, horn, like a horn blast in the house that night, do you know? Who? The people that were living in the house. Uh, why do you ask that? I'm just wondering. I don't know, there was, uh, I don't know. Where would the horn blast come from? Like when I was driving away, I was honked, I honked the horn in, the, in his car. Oh, accidentally? Yeah, I think accidentally, but maybe. So you were in his you were in his trailer for a little while after it happened. Yeah. And um, I think he said he took his wallet and his ID and um, yeah. and did you take anything else out of the trailer? Take some food with you? Probably some granola bars. Okay. Anything else? Cup, perhaps. Not that I remember. Okay. Just some food. Just... Where did you find his car keys at? In his pocket. So he dug through his pockets and grabbed his wallet, grabbed his keys, take any money? 
there was some money in his wallet, but I don't know how much. It was like uh, maybe 30 bucks or something, 20, 30, 40 bucks. Okay. Did you take anything out of the wallet and leave it there? Like, Not that I remember. Okay. Um, so you eventually left the trailer, and uh, you must have gone back to the shop, correct? Yeah. There was some um, barbecue sauce and pickles and mustard, I think, and a bunch of other like condiments and some um, some meat that like it had been taken out of a freezer. Mm -hmm. It was staged in the shop. It was what? Sorry. Like it was staged. It was like set on the floor, like like it was uh, put there, intending for someone to come back and get it later or something. Do you remember that kind of stuff? Probably. Can you that picture? Yeah, probably. That must have, I mean, I'm assuming that must have come out of the trailer? Do you know? I don't think so. It, would it have come from the shop? Yeah. Where did you find that stuff in the shop? I don't remember, but I don't, I don't, I wouldn't have taken. I'm going to show you a picture of that stuff too, so it, you, it might help to recall. This was in the shop. There might have been a freezer somewhere. Do you think there was a freezer in the shop? I mean, were you intending to maybe eat that there in, while you're staying in the shop, or, or you just don't remember? I don't remember. I probably did eat some stuff in that shop or something. Okay. But I don't remember. Is it possible that you brought that stuff from the trailer and like left, left it there while you were taking things out of the shop to leave? I don't think I would have taken it yeah. from the camper to the car to the to the camper, I mean to the uh, shop, and then take it out of it the car make sense, and put it into the shop. Yeah. No. Brandon is not able to recall why several items were placed the way they were, and the detectives do not further question him, as there is no evident motive for him to lie about it. It's likely you, you, might, you might have found this in the, so in the shop. In the shop. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> So you, uh, did you back the car over to the shop to load it up or were you carrying everything from the shop over to the car? I think I pulled it over by the door, pulled the car over by the door. And you took some tools, a welder, dremel yeah. tool, things like that, yeah. and put it in, car. in the car or in the yeah, trunk? In the car. In the, in the oh, passenger? I'm not sure exactly where I put it, probably. Okay. okay. And this, both. okay. This car that you, this Bob's car that yeah. you took, it was a red car. Yeah. And um, you had mentioned that it was a Chevy Impala. That's my belief. Okay, that's your belief. So, um, it's my belief it was a different kind of a car, but it was red. Uh, okay. Um, and if I showed you a picture of that, do you think you'd remember? Probably. Okay, there's, there's one. There's another. With the tire. Uh, not yet. Yeah. It didn't seem like it. Let me show you. I'll show you a picture of the inside. Maybe the, maybe the driver's compartment. Maybe that might spark a memory for you. It looks like it was a, a manual, manual transmission. This is Bob. This is Bob's car. I don't remember that it, whether it was manual or automatic. Okay. But it was definitely a red car. Yeah. Okay. This is Bob's car that was taken from his property All right. when, when you left. And you, you had mentioned um, on your way south, after you left Bob's house, Yeah. after this haul had happened, um, you left Bob's property that night, like within hours after killing him, correct? Yeah. Okay. Um, and do you remember, I know it's going to be hard for you to recall, but do you remember what time of the day this happened between you and Bob? Because it was summertime, so it was probably light until about 9 o'clock at night. Then it's hard to estimate because it was, it seems like sometime between 5 p.m. and 7 p.m. So it was still light out then? A little bit. Okay. I think. And you'd mentioned um, when you drove down to Portland, you, and you were headed down to Portland to, to do what? 
Oh, there's a couple of Australia. I, I was just trying to go you back head back home. home. Were, you, were you intending to drive the car back home? Yeah, okay. probably. Uh, but you fell asleep hmm. and you hit a barrier or something. Just, yeah, those cement medians, like on the freeway. Okay. Barricade, or, you know, just those center dividers that are concrete. Do you remember where that was? It was, um, it had to have been in Portland. And why do you say that? Or on the outskirts, because soon after I pulled over, pulled off the freeway into the park, <clears throat> and um, that turned out to be Burnside, um, Portland or something. Okay. The car was found with a flat tire. Mm -hmm. It was actually a, the the tire that was flat is actually the right front tire mm -hmm. that um, and it looked like it had some abrasions on it or something from from hitting something hard like maybe a cement barrier or something barricade. Does that look familiar to you? That's the front right tire of the vehicle. I, I can't remember. That doesn't look that, that doesn't look really familiar. Okay. Did you ever get out and look at it, or just kind of realize that there's a flat tire and that that it was kind of out of commission at that point? Yeah, I looked at it a couple of times, but I don't remember the the details about how it looked. Okay. Well, the story that you told the other night um, to Detective Wilson um, actually was consistent with the condition of the vehicle. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, being 22 years ago, it's, mm -hmm. I mean, I can see why you would maybe mistake the front left tire from the front right tire. It's, I think it's the front right tire. Actually, it's the front left, so that's what was kind of, that's what made me go back and look at the photos. But I was pretty sure it's the front right. Okay, well, it is the front right, yeah, mm -hmm. that's correct. Right. Or, oh, uh, wait, front right, you mean on the driver's side or the passenger side? The passenger side. side. That's the passenger side tire that was that was damaged. If so, that's weird. I don't. It didn't seem like that was the mm -hmm. one. Well, nonetheless, I mean, you you knew that there was a flat tire. That's why you pulled off the freeway, and mm -hmm. and that's Bob's car, and that's the condition it was found in. So I mean, it, it, it's just a little hiccup. No, no, it's not that big of a deal, really, because it. I mean, you knew that the car was disabled. Can I ask just a clarifying question? Back to Sue and Calvin. Uh, Sue was your friend's cousin. Calvin was the husband or boyfriend. How old were they? I would say... I would say... Oh, it's hard to... I don't know for sure. Maybe in their mid-twenties. Okay. And... Uh, yeah, to early thirties. What did they do for a living that you remember job-wise? I don't think they were employed. Okay. Did they have an apartment? Did they have a house? A house. A house. And did they live uh, in the city limits of in, in, down in Kelso somewhere or outside of Kelso? Or I'm not sure the layout there, but I know it's in like Kelso or you know, right there. Okay. Did they have any kids? Yeah, they had um, a daughter. Do you remember her name? I don't. Yeah, okay. She's a cool kid, though. Mm -hmm. And how old was she at the time? Twelve. Twelve years old. Yeah. Okay. That's all I have. Um, you pull off the freeway, park somewhere to park. You were told you couldn't stay there. Mm -hmm. So you drove the car over to... Did you drive or, or push the car? I was trying to remember. You ended up somewhere else. Yeah. There's a guy that like stopped um, with the police officer there. And said he'd give me a hand. So I think he towed me to the gas station. And then I went. I stayed with them for like the next seven or so days. But you left Bob's car at a big, in a big parking lot. Compared to today, CCTV was not as prevalent in the 90s, and capturing video footage of the suspect with the stolen vehicle would have been a significant piece of the puzzle for those involved in the initial investigation. Okay. And it's and you removed all the problem, removed all the stolen property that you took from Bob's house mm -hmm. and took it with you with the other people. Yeah. Did you? Um, there was a, a blue shirt that was left there at the scene. 
Was that, do you remember if that was your blue shirt or, or could have been Bob's or do you remember what you were wearing if you pick, took any clothes off, cleaned yourself up anywhere? I, I would have cleaned myself up. The, the clothes that I had on would have been bloody. Mm -hmm. So if they weren't bloody, then I don't know if I, I would have to look at them and see if they're like the ones that I had. Or Do you remember stopping anywhere on the way to Portland, like at a restaurant or anything to clean up? or Because you had to have blood all over you. I cleaned up when I got to their, to, to those people's place. They took my the, the bloody clothes and let me take a shower. Okay. Did you tell them what you'd done? Not specifically. You said something about making up a story about something else. Okay. Yeah, that something happened to my sister and I had to, I had to take care of it. And I thought that would be explanation enough. Okay. But I mean, that I, they didn't, you know, that. You were in Kelso for probably, what, a couple weeks maybe? Yeah. So, what did you do for money while you were in Kelso? I didn't have a job or anything. I had a little bit of money left. Okay. All right. Sue and Cal like supported us with some food and stuff. That's your cousin, and you were staying with them. Uh, my friend, or your friend, their cousin, uh, this Randy Davis. Did you do you remember anybody in Kelso that you would have? met and remembered uh, anybody first and last name can you think of anybody you ran into that really sticks out in your mind um, other than those those folks mm -hmm. a bar uh, another house did you, were you ever contacted by the police while you were in Kelso mm -hmm. no. do you remember stealing anything while you were in Kelso other than from Bob no. Damaging any property? No. Assaulting anyone else? No. Or engaged in any fights or anything? Using any what? Engaged in any fights with anybody? No. What did you do for the two weeks? Mostly got high. Okay. Do you remember who you were getting your drugs from? Really not an issue for us now, but I know. No. Okay. Are you getting it from Sue and Cal? Do they offer you any? Uh, it doesn't matter. It's irrelevant. It's okay. Yeah, they're not any tr nobody's in any trouble. I just try to confirm a few things. Can you, I mean, you've had a couple of days to kind of think about this. I mean, obviously 22 years actually, but since you actually came forward and, and began talking about it, have you? did you think of anything that you didn't tell the detectives the other night that that you remember now? In other words, is there anything else that that you feel is important that you haven't talked about yet? No. Okay. The knife that that um, that you stabbed Bob with? Yeah. You took it with you, you said? Yeah. And you had it with you until you were arrested in uh, Portland? And you said um, they, the jail had it when they took property off of you mm -hmm. at the jail and you never got it back. Mm -hmm. Do you know what they did with it? Do you know if they just destroyed it or if they asked you if they could destroy it or if they gave it to someone else or? They never said anything to me about it. You just never heard anything about it, okay. Mm -hmm. Although Brandon has turned himself in and confessed to the murder, it took him over 20 years to do so. Like many others that commit such a heinous crime and get away with it, Brandon went on with his life as if nothing had ever happened. The uh, you were you were originally charged with uh, possession of some kind of an illicit drug in Portland when you were when you were arrested down there mm -hmm. because you overdosed, I think, in a bar. I think you said. That's correct. So I'm just going to make an assumption here, and correct me if I'm wrong. So the, the prop, Bob's property that you had, you uh, traded it or sold it or whatever, the drugs that you used that you overdosed on, mm -hmm. was that purchased with the prop, Bob's property that you sold? 
Because you probably didn't have any money then. Um, the, the way that it was working is I started trading that the, his property for meth, and I was shooting meth to get high, and I started going out of my mind, and I started telling the people that I was with I couldn't live with what I did, and I have to kill myself, and can you give me some heroin? Because I didn't really use heroin. I used mostly cocaine, but mm -hmm. then I started doing meth when I went up there. And um, so uh, um, I asked that, this, that lady if she could give me some heroin, and so she got me some heroin, and I went into the bar, and I was sitting there, and I ended up shooting up like 155 units of heroin. Which I had only maybe done heroin twice in my life or something, but so that's what happened. And you were eventually um, taken to the hospital. Yeah. Do you remember which hospital you were at? I don't. Okay. Do you remember which bar you were at? <coughs> Do you remember the name of it? Um, I don't. Was there any landmarks around or anything that we would... Um, I don't remember. That's our one, yeah. Yeah, I don't remember. I just remember telling them I had to leave and that I had to die. No. And then I got the heroin from them and I left and I found the very first place that I found was a bar and I walked in there and they asked me for my ID and I gave them my orange street halfway house ID card and bought a picture of beer, only took like a, a little drink out of it and then went into the bathroom and had this big spoon and I mixed the heroin in there and drew up one syringe full and another one that was like 65 units full and then I was sitting there like having a hard time doing it, like actually just going through with it. And then I heard somebody come into the bathroom and I just like just did it. Finally, like I'd probably sat there for maybe half an hour just trying to get up the nerve to actually just push it into my veins. And then that's when I did it was and this guy walked in and this, I got that one holy big one in there and the one that had like 95 units and then the other one I probably got about I don't know 50 units or something and then I was out like just totally out cold the next thing I remember I was coming to on the stretcher and that was one and that's one that's all the last thing I'm, I mean that's what happened there so yeah you went to the hospital yeah and then you went from the hospital to the jail yeah and they charged you with... <coughs> Excuse me. Do you remember what your charges were? I know one of them was possession drug possession. Of, yeah. And fugitive from justice. From leaving here? Yeah. And what were you... You had just a DFC warrant or something for using in that half by house. Is that what the what the charge was? Do you remember? I can't remember for sure. You had another warrant from here, though? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, then you spent almost a month, I think, in Multnomah County Jail. And then you were extradited over here directly from the jail. Does that sound right? Okay. Yeah. There, was a, um, there was a note that you wrote, that you said you wrote at Bob's house, uh, in, the, in the trailer. Yeah. And you said something about, you wrote it, in, you know, assuming that you were Bob, you wrote it that you were leaving. Going over to somebody's house. Okay. And the name of it was the name of somebody who whose address and name was inside of his, uh, uh, his trailer. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I think I know why you did that, but you put the note on there to... Just to make it look like somebody, so nobody would question, like, where you, like, why is... Why he's not answering the door? Yeah. Okay. Uh, where did you put that note at? Brandon discloses a key piece of evidence left behind at the crime scene that only someone present during the crime in question would know about. A note that Brandon composed to try and convince any curious neighbors that Robert was okay, when in fact, he was not. I think on the door. Like on the outside of the door? I think. I don't remember for sure. But I, I don't believe so. Okay. Um. Did you sign it, Bob, or did you sign it somebody else's name? I can't remember. I would imagine that I would sign it, Bob. Did you say anything about a designated driver? Huh. Okay. Not that I, not that I know. I can't remember. 
You also said that you, while you were after after you killed Bob, you were in Santa Trailer for a little while, and someone came and knocked on the door. Did you look out to see who it was? Did they say anything through the door? Like, is there anything new on yelling like Bobby in there? Or? I think okay if that's if that's how you want to be or something. I think. And I think you told Detective Wilson that sounded like someone younger. That yeah, yeah. Like a kid, maybe, or yeah. And you're and you were sure of that. Pretty sure. Do you did you see where they went after they left the trailer? No. Do you know if it might have been someone that lived at the house nearby, or? That was my assumption. You okay. know, I didn't know Just one way or the other because I didn't see him approach. I didn't hear. hear a I didn't car see or him anything. go. I didn't see him in any direction. Do you know if they were alone? It seemed like it. The hammer, um, after you hit Bob in the face with it, or in the head with it, did you throw it down or did it drop out of your hand or during the struggle maybe did it? I don't remember. And um, a picture of the covered all of the pile. Yeah, one quick question, when you broke the, broke in, did you did you do anything with the broken glass? Would you have thought to do anything with it on the way in, just so the number looks, would look like it's... Maybe. This is the inside of the trailer where the glass was broke. Right. And there was a, like a welder's cap, so... Yeah. And the only thing, the only two things, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, the only two things I could think of that that might be for would be either to protect your hand while you're breaking it, if you happen to break it with your hand, or to just kind of plug the hole after the fact. I don't remember. Okay. I really don't remember. Okay. It's just kind of an, an unusual place for a for a welder's cap to be. Mm -hmm. I mean, if I mean you wouldn't if you were living in the trailer, I can't imagine you would leave a welder's cap in the. Mm -hmm. It doesn't make sense to me. So no, it almost looks like it was placed there by someone, which yeah. would likely have been you. I would imagine. Okay. Yeah, that would be my assumption. Okay. Do you remember where you uh, maybe tried to stop the bleeding the most on your finger when it was bleeding? Do you remember who you used a rag or a glove or a shirt or your pants or? I don't remember any of it. Not any of that. Actually, I don't remember. The detectives combed through as much evidence, photos, and records as possible so that they can confirm that Brandon is being honest and that his confession is real. Although there is much that Brandon is unable to remember and there aren't any eyewitnesses to the crime or video footage that ties him to the crime scene, the detectives consider heavily everything that has been shared with them. Which finger you have your left? Yeah, my left thumb. Are you left-handed? No, I'm right-handed. Did you stab mostly with your left or mostly with your right or both? I think mostly with my right. I think it might have closed on my hand when I was trying to open it. Okay. Because it was like in a struggle. Um, it, and this is a pretty significant it, incident in your life, which I mean, you have some pretty clear recollection of. Um, do you remember before you left the trailer? Do you remember like looking on the floor and before you left, what how you left the trailer? I think I was I I stuck blankets on him. And, and you did that just to just to conceal I, him. I honestly don't know. I don't know. I was like, or were you? I could think back and probably apply a number of different reasons. Some of them conscious, some of them unconscious. I mean, there's a whole lot of reasons. Well, maybe they just did you cover him so you didn't have to look at him dead? Maybe that might have been something. Yeah, I mean. And I have a picture of a hammer, the only hammer that was really there. You said it was a kind of a ball peen kind of a hammer, but the one that was present at the scene was a little bit different. Um, you only saw one hammer. Did you see more than one hammer in the in the trailer, or was it just the one? I don't remember. Okay. Whatever there was one more.
more than one. That's the hammer that was there. Does that look familiar? Um, I might have a wrong recollection of it. Okay. Well, that was that was right next to Bob when he was discovered. So, could you have put some gloves on after the fact to, to work with the, the towels or the the blankets or him or? Could you have put some gloves on that maybe were inside the trailer that you found? Maybe, but I don't remember. If, I don't remember if, how, like there being gloves. Do you remember what? Uh, I know you were, said you were a smoker back then. Do you remember what kind of cigarettes he used? <coughs> the trailer. I don't know if he smoked or not. Do you remember um, any of the manuals or anything that were laying around? I know there was a computer book. Okay. I remember a computer book, and and I didn't even know that he smoked, and and, and except I saw in the ashtray in that car, in the photo of his car, there were cigarette butts in there. Do you remember a bunch of cigarette butts in the car when you were driving it? In instances where detectives might believe that a person is making a false confession, they will ask questions or make comments about the case in order to test the suspect. Persons that make false confessions tend to describe things like cigarette butts in a car ashtray, whereas most people would not notice such a thing, especially during or after committing a crime, such as murder. I don't remember one way or the other. Okay. In that respect, but you just say that because of the picture? Yeah. So I'm going to show you a picture of the trailer when, when, uh, when the police finally showed up at the trailer, when the body was discovered. Um, Can you tell me if this is this, if this to your to your best recollection that this is the condition in which you left it? Why would it matter? Like if I, I don't know. I don't well, I'll, I'll explain why after I show you the picture. Okay, there, there's actually a reason why I'm, I'm asking this question. Okay, do you think you might recall it or not? I don't know. Because if you don't think if if you didn't ever, I mean, after you covered him up, you, you said you covered him up with a bunch of blankets, just stuff from inside the trailer that was laying around, correct? Mm -hmm. So you covered him up. Um, could you have covered up with some clothing too? Probably. Just a bunch of articles that were there at the time? Probably. Do you remember a, a like a bright, like Afghan kind of a blanket at all? There's the one that I saw in that other picture that's pink. Like I saw just a glimpse of one in that other picture. I wouldn't have remembered it. Uh, wow. Let me show this. Let me just show this to you. Does that does that look like like perhaps the the way you left it when you left the trailer? Probably. So, right. Who else did you tell about what happened? Nobody. Ever. Except for... Yeah, when I was on bath salt at Lone Peak. What's Lone Peak? It's uh, one of the parts of the Utah State Prison. And who did you tell there? I think it was the FBI. Like, talking to them in my sleep, like, I wasn't asleep or whatever, but investigators from somewhere, I know I had mentioned something. And like you dreamt it or something? <coughs> <coughs> no. Even though I was probably somewhat hallucinating, it was still real, and I'm very aware of how real it was. Was there in prison? I was in prison? Yeah. And some investigators came to your cell or to the infirmary or I'm not quite sure where they were, but they're probably up in the rafters. Or I mean there's probably different parts that they can go to make observations of the prison prisoners. And I mean this will sound weird or whatever, but so I think that they're Yeah, asking me different questions and I was answering in weird ways. They were probably who knows what they appeared like, but 
Had it, has that ever happened to you before in the past? Where? Anywhere. Not quite like that. Maybe with the similar, like, just questions and stuff, but... It, so you're seeing it, like, kind of like you're hallucinating now? Mm -hmm. Does that happen to you often? Or no. is that kind of the only time? No, I okay. mean, most of it has been drug-related. Okay. And so it's not... When you got booked into the Multnomah County Jail after you were in the hospital for the overdosing, and you got put in with whoever you were, you were bunking with, uh, did you tell anybody about this incident or even allude to it in a little bit? I think I told one, one, I think I might have told a couple of, I didn't say anything specific, but yeah, mentioned I also alluded to it. I didn't mention Kelso, I don't think. Maybe I did. It's hard to remember. Yeah, it's a long time ago. Have you ever been? I'm not sure. Have you ever been taken to the hospital, taken into custody, and taken to the hospital by the police? Um, that day, um, before they took me to Multnomah, Multnomah. I mean, at any time in your life, not not because of the issues, not because of your overdose. Have you ever been contacted by the police and questioned and taken to the hospital for like a mental health evaluation? No. Okay. Who are you bunking with right now? Um, I don't know, can't remember his name. I think his name's Jim. He introduced himself, but like today I asked him what his name was, but I can't remember now. Did you talk to him at all? Learning as much as possible about the suspect, including their mental health status, is extremely important as many false confessions are attributed to a mental health issue or breakdown. Not at length. I, I've mostly slept. Okay. I'm gonna be I'm gonna be perfectly honest with you. I'm just gonna tell you right now that mm -hmm. I'm I'm gonna go talk to him. So, mm -hmm. did you say anything to him about why you're in there? No. Okay. Did he ask you? Mm -hmm. Okay. Anything else? Do you have any questions for us? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd be willing to answer your questions for you if you have any. You'll, you'll get you'll get extradited to Washington back mm -hmm. to our to our jail, mm -hmm. um, and uh, if you want to reach out to us at any point, talk to us. Um, you just tell one of the one of the corrections officers there that you want to talk to the Kelso detectives. All right. We'll come. They'll get a message to us, and we'll come talk to you. All right. Um, We're going to end up coming out and picking you up. Well, maybe not us, but someone yeah. will probably the next week or two. Right. Yeah. Just depends on whether or not you fight the extradition or not, and that's mm -hmm. not anything we even care about, but that's up to you. Um, can, I, can I ask, just let's, if we can go back to what made you walk in the door this weekend and, and tell somebody this and write that note, can we, can, do you mind if I ask you why you did that? Yeah, it's been a long time coming, but yeah. Something I've been running from forever. And just, yeah, I don't know. It's nothing. It's not my doing. What do you mean by that? Yeah. I don't, mm. I mean, are you trying to do the right thing, or do you think like you've been forced to come I'm in here? Trying or? to do the right thing, but having a lot of difficulty for a long time. So. Yeah. Were you ever forced to come in here and talk about it? Anybody? No. So you came in here voluntarily on your own volition. Mm -hmm. Did you get any Where tattoos while you were in Kelso? I didn't. didn't. We have some tattoo people up there. Had you ever been to Kelso before that two-week period? Had you ever been there before? I hadn't. Have you ever been back since? I haven't. Had you ever been in the trailer before the, when you, the, the day you went in and got confronted by him. No. Oh. Um, did you know him at all before this incident? I didn't. 
And the reason I ask is his driver's license says Robert Boucher. You keep referring to him as Bob. And I'm just wondering if you've just uh, you've come to that because most Roberts go by Bob. Is that why you've done that, or? No, I think that his license says Bob. Okay, and you you said you got rid of that license. How did you get rid of that license? Inside of a window sill um, of a vehicle okay. that the guy was letting me stay at his, at his house. Okay. Do you remember what kind of car that was? It was a, one of those vans that um have like a, a bed or like a flat nose van like a older kind of like they're kind of unique um i don't know how to what the terminology used to describe them is but like a volkswagen kind of, van kind of but it but um like a volkswagen van but with a truck bed instead of a you don't remember their names I don't. I don't. How old are they? They're probably. I think the guy was maybe four or five years older than me, and the woman was probably 15 years older than, or 10 years older than me, or 15 years older than me. Do they have kids? Mm, not that I know of. Okay. Um, Had you ever been in the car before the time you took it? No. Had never been in there? Okay. Do you remember anything that happened to the license plate to the front of that car? I don't. Okay. No questions for us? No. I really appreciate you talking to us. It, it does answer a lot of questions about peripheral things that mm -hmm. that we thought were related to this that you know may or may, or have, may, or may not have been at this point. So, but um, it is helpful. And I appreciate your willingness to come over here. After a thorough review of the original case files of the original investigation, the detectives found Brandon's story to be consistent with the evidence collected. Brandon's description of the scene also matched the crime scene. Although the Bushy family had asked that Brandon be given a light sentence, he was ultimately sentenced to 17 years in prison. R.I.P. to the victim, Robert Bushy. Do you think justice was served, and does the punishment fit the crime? Be sure to comment your thoughts and let us know what you think about this interrogation, including the sentencing of this man. Thanks so much for watching today's video. With that, subscribe for more, be safe, and we'll see you in our next video.